Hello pro gamers! As you can see, I'm a bit of a Mecha or Transformers fan. In fact, I have one right here. This cost me a lot of money and uh, it was worth it though. Since I was little, I wanted to build Iron Man's holographic interface. You know, like in 2008, the first Iron Man where the helmet goes down and Jarvis grows up and you have these circular thingy that aims for Iron Man. So now that I'm a computer science student and I have access to build some of the stupid robot ideas just like that guy over there, there I decided to build my own heads-up display for shooting things. So here is how it's going to work. First, let me clear up my desk a little bit and voila, this is my heads-up display glasses I bought from Amazon. It costs a lot of money, how much? Don't ask, just remember a lot. What this thing can do is that it can attach to my glasses and act as a heads-up display. And yes, I accidentally broke the clip on so I have to use a rubber band. I know, pathetic. Well, I'm just going to download some reticle online, slap it to my desktop, connect it to the heads-up display and there we go. Iron Man heads up aiming display. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Thank you. And we're gonna use it to shoot Michael Reeves. But wait, hold on you might ask. How do you know that this thing actually helped you to shoot better and not that I'm actually some sort of gun mental psychopath who's used to shoot people? Well, we're gonna do some benchmark testing. Hello, it's me again, post-production Ray Lee. We're gonna put some boxes on more boxes and we're gonna shoot them. That's how we're gonna benchmark. Easy. Let's get some benchmarking started. All right, first round. Um, we might have an issue here. Benchmarking test is a little bit too easy. So I'm going to go a little bit back so we can actually see some results. Backwards, I'm also going to place one target over there so we can get some distance. All right? First round. Hit. Miss. Second round. Third round. Well, um, I accidentally lost the other bullet, so um, I guess we'll just stick with this one. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, this actually kind of works. And um, I get it, um, Iron Man's mobile suit is supposed to be you know, mobile and flying through the sky, but mine requires a big old PC, but like, you know, one step, one small step closer to my sci-fi dreams. It's time for some benchmarking. All right, my gun is clocked and I am free of the wire intrusion. Let's do this. <sighs> okay, align the crosshair with the gun. Three, two, one, shoot. <laughs> This actually works, this is so stupid. Two, one, shoot. <laughs> it's so dumb. Okay, okay, we missed that one, but but I think we got this. We got this. One more try. One, shoot. <laughs> so far we tried some pretty normal reticles, and now we're gonna try some sci-fi reticles. Ooh, this one looks cool. Yeah. Actually works. Oh my god. Ooh. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. Oh. Let's go for the lower one this time. Three, two, one. Shoot. <laughs> so at this point, some of you guys might be wondering, how does this work? Isn't this blocking your vision? Because if you look at Iron Man's heads up the display or some other futuristic suit, you can see that the heads up display, you can see through it. That's how you aim, right? You have the reticle, then you have the target. Well, here's how this works. On my right eye, I see the reticle, and yes, it's blocked. However, on my left eye, I can still see the object behind it. 
So if I put my number like this, I can see that it's two, and the two is exactly in front of the reticle. All of that post-processing, putting the two images together, is happening in my brain, which makes this entire Iron Man has a reticle feature possible. So yeah. Oh, we promised to shoot Michael Reeves. Almost forgot about that. <laughs> So yeah, that was my cheap version of Iron Man's heads up hollow display. Unfortunately, it's not very practical since the display is too small for you to see actual fonts. But hey, it can be cool with a Nerf gun. <laughs> I'm actually a massive Michael Reeves fan, and I think I will definitely be building more stupid robot ideas. Ah. <laughs> Before I end off this video, I would just like to read off some of your comments because they have been very encouraging to me. So, from Anna Lee. Aw, oh, your cat is so cute. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. It really means a lot. From The Michelle Show. Wow, you're so good at yo-yo. Wow, such dedication. Thank you, Michelle. My number one fan. <laughs> and from Wasif Khan. I'm a subscribe. <laughs> you actually don't mean, don't know how much that means to me. I was actually pretty sad one night and on my YouTube notification it just suddenly showed his message, I'm a subscribe, and that really made my day. From Koda Kazi, you deserve more subs, man. Thank you, buddy. And uh, from Account9, hi, Ray. Hi, Account9. Thank you for supporting your senpai here at my useless YouTube channel. From CJ, I need a room with Which roughly translates to, hey, Japanese is not bad. Thank you so much, CJ. Thank you so much. I hope your master's program is doing well. And uh, last one. So this one wasn't an actual comment on my YouTube video, but it was from um, one of my um, younger friends. And uh, she said, so hi, Ray. I don't know if this is weird or not, but I watch a couple of your videos and I just wanted to say they're so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. They're very good quality and you already have that fun content that's interesting. AKA you know what the kids these days like. <laughs> I feel like such a... <laughs> I feel like such a boomer. <laughs> um, don't be discouraged and keep on going. Yeah, definitely will. And um, right now there's not many people watching my YouTube videos. However, I'm gonna keep up the quality and keep up the regular upload schedule. Maybe I won't get much views, but who knows? In a year or two, this channel might blow up. So, um, thanks for watching, and thanks for sticking along for the ride. See you next time.